Okay, let's do this. All right, so I believe this is recording. Let me start my slideshow. So we are, my name is Nathan Rogers. Uh, this is part of the um, capstone course. This is the final presentation um, of week eight. Uh, so this is uh, summarizing the capstone uh, research project. The introduction. Uh, my presentation covers uh, information regarding my PICO question, which is, does exercise and healthy eating have positive benefits on humans? Uh, so my research is going to do an in-depth analysis covering details and research regarding this topic. So let's get into that. The background and significance of this problem is that there is a growing problem of obesity and diseases. We have cardiovascular problems, we have diabetes, strokes, um, you name it. Uh, all these types of problems that um, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, nutritional choices, and very poor lifestyle management are uh, very well contributing to uh, these disease processes that so many Americans and just worldwide, um, it's just such a growing problem and that is projected to continue to get worse. Um, there's many reasons why, but it is unfortunate that this is a growing problem. It's not getting better. So we do need to focus on things that can help uh, the people that we deal with on a daily basis to improve their lives, reduce the risk of uh, complications or death. Uh, so let's get into that. The methods. Well, actually, let's do this first, and then we'll get to the methods and design. So the theoretical model and framework that I have chosen is uh, Ross Worm's uh, theoretical model. I'm just going to read it here. The basis of um, theoret the theoretical framework encompasses a very effective method to outline a systematic process for the change to evidence-based practice. As far as the organizing framework is defined, the model is based on theoretical and research uh, literature uh, related to evidence-based practice. Uh, research utilization, standardized language, and change theory. In this model, practitioners are guided through the entire process of developing and integrating an evidence-based practice change. The model supports evidence-based practice changes derived from a combination of quantitative and qualitative data, clinical expertise, and contextual evidence. Ross Worm. Um, so my goal is to use um, research um, and literature and to form the best evidence-based practice for the most effective forms of exercise and nutrition. So let's go back up to the, or back to, let's go to the methods and designs. Um, the plan of this research project is to utilize nutritional and fitness experts to undergo testing of different levels of expertise and specialty. Um, we want many participants or volunteers that are obese, have these health problems, are diabetic, cardiovascular disease, high cholesterol. We want these types of participants to volunteer to be part of this method. These uh, nutritional and fitness experts, they are going to bring to the table different nutrition plans and exercise methods that we are going to study to find the best methods that provide the best results. Um, six month period of testing will be undergone. Quantitative and qualitative data will be collected. Quantitative, um, very measurable kind of statistics. We have weight loss. We have decreased BMI. 
we have improved cholesterol, uh, lipid panels, um, and for things like that. Qualitative data includes improved mood. So that is going to be collected by interviewing the participants, um, asking them questions. How has their mood improved? Um, do they feel like they're seeing results? Do they feel happier? So these are subjective changes that aren't really measurable by statistics, but these are it's subjective data that the volunteers will be able to express to us and that we can collect that information, which is very valuable. Um, they are going to be go undergoing different types of fitness. So we have uh, some that will do long steady state cardio. They're going to jog for 30 to 40 minutes. Um, others are going to do high intensity interval training. So kind of crossfit workouts, 10 minute bursts of pretty high intense uh, functional fitness. And then we have just regular weightlifting and then other fitness uh, coaches will modify and combine all the three types or many other types to have constant change. And we're going to study each of those um, types of working out and to measure all that data. Um, data that the met I uh, suggested earlier with the quantitative stuff. Um, so they're going to have um, weight checks every two weeks, BMI checks every two weeks. As far as the lipid panels go, those will probably be checked maybe every three months. That's kind of standard for those lab levels. And then the qualitative data, um, that can be taken once every two weeks or once a month uh, interview to see the progress and see uh, how the changes are, if they're good or bad. Okay. Um, interventions, so kind of discussed earlier, we have the different exercise types, you know, the longer cardio, using the cardio machines, either the rowing machine, the elliptical, um, and we'll see if those provide benefits. Um, different nutritional plans, so you got the Mediterranean diet, you got the keto diet, carnivore diet. There's a lot of popular diets that people use or like to use that say they've seen good benefits from and we would like to find out what are the most effective carnivore diet i think you do cut out a lot of carbs and you do target a lot of fat but your lipid panel might go through the roof if you're only eating meats and fats you know so we do want to see the positives and negatives doing stuff like that uh the coaches will also be kind of accountability partners a big problem with this study, a major, uh, I, not a liability, but a, a problem that could skew the data is that the participants are not committed and are not disciplined with the research. Um, we don't live with them. We can't tell them what to do when they get home. They're going to eat a pizza when they get home. And we can be there to coach them. Uh, but they also need to put in the effort when they are exercising. People that are volunteering, these participants, they have poor health choices. They've been making poor health choices their whole life. And it will be very difficult for them to make these necessary changes for improvement. So that is a major liability for the research is that they will not try hard enough they won't push themselves out of their comfort zone and that they will cheat when they get home and they won't eat the prescribed meals. Um, but we'll have accountability partners that will try to help uh, be there for them to keep them accountable to the prescribed diet and regimen uh, in the hopes that we'll have great uh, information and accurate information. And then once the study is over, because it's going to be a six month period of studying and measuring information, uh, we don't want to just forget about them and let them go back to their old ways. We want to continue to have follow up appointments and check ins that these people can continue to maintain 
good progress and that maybe will have created in them a desire for continued improvement and change and that they'll just make the choice to continue to improve their lives because they like what they see. They like the benefits and results that they've achieved. Expected results. We are going to see decreased BMI, decreased weight, improved cholesterol levels, decreased risk of stroke, cardiovascular disease. And then qualitative data, we're going to see improved mood, anxiety, depression. Maybe we'll get some of these people off of antidepressants. Um, They'll be more active. They'll feel better about themselves. They'll lose weight. They'll be more confident. They'll be more ambitious. All these things are expected results if you take care of your body through exercise and healthy eating. Some anticipated conclusions are discovering the most effective forms of exercise and nutrition that provide the best benefits for human beings. There are many different forms of fitness and nutrition, and this study is researching how effective they are, and in turn will own, hone in on the most effective methods. These methods will bring the patient population many benefits, including changes in the weight, the BMI, the mood, cholesterol, and reducing risk for many of those problematic diseases. Some implications for practice. In every type of practice that advanced practice providers work in, there will be patients that suffer from obesity, cardiovascular disease, hyperlipidemia, depression, and anxiety. This research study will arm providers with the tools necessary to help these patients. Knowledge on health, exercise, and nutrition are extremely valuable in helping this type of patient population. Uh, most patients are uneducated on specific methods to treat their bodies better, and we will be better prepared to help them do this. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what type of setting you work in, whether you're in a family clinic, urgent care, emergency room, uh, urology, whatever. You're going to be dealing with uh, patients with these problems because... Let's be real, more Americans than not are overweight, have hypertension, have diabetes, and we're going to need to be aware of this, and um, we're going to want to help them however possible um, to improve their health. So if we're educated on these methods, very effective methods to work out, and nutrition plans, uh, we want to be able to teach them, hey, uh, maybe don't do elliptical for 45 minutes to go. Do some shorter, harder cardio sessions and maybe eat more fish and rice and vegetables. You know, things like that that are specifically going to help them. Because most people know, hey, I need to exercise and eat healthy, but I've been doing the elliptical for two months. I don't see any results. You know, you might have plateaued. We need to be aware of things like that to be able to teach them to mix it up in the gym and stop eating so much uh, potatoes uh, it's too many carbs and we're not aware um, that you're eating too much sugar through the carbs and things like that so always improving knowledge in these areas will be beneficial and that is gonna bring my presentation to a close and I thank you for watching.